Good evening. I wrap in and here we are with your financial market wrap up and your wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday, the 24th of October, 2023. All right. You know, we're now getting to all the big tech companies and we're finding out, are they making money, aren't they? Alphabet was a miss. Actually, I thought it was good numbers, but the market didn't like that it missed on its cloud business. It dropped it. So you're seeing a mixture here. You got the Dow up in one way. Other markets did excellent, to be honest with you. Microsoft through the roof, all right? Its business is firing on every single cylinder. And I think you're going to see that it's an interesting time in the markets. But you're getting a very mixed picture. I hate to mention this and use this word, but warmongering is probably the, the, the term that you got to use in some of these markets. The markets want to see more war for certain things to happen. For the gold market to come alive, let's get something else going. We've been here, we've done here with the skirmish, we've heard every day the threats against Iran, but nothing new is happening. Once the Israeli war game begins, the game changes. Do we then see the culprits in the area, the terrorists, the, the bad boys come out and what do they do? Does Iran sit back and do nothing over the threats or does it challenge the U.S. through its proxies or directly? Nobody seems to know. So everybody's getting ready for whatever the event is and it's wearing. There's no question about it, it's wearing. You're no longer in the Brent in the 90s, you're back to the 80s. Now, this was to me a surprise, not because of the war. China today made a statement. They're changing some fiscal policies as the party Congress is going on, the People's Congress is going on. And they made a big change. We had heard over the weekend and then yesterday, they were adding $137 billion into the government. They're not giving it to the regionals to hurt themselves. The government there, I think, realized the central government, they are stretched. All the regional governments are stretched because they counted so much on real estate taxes to support their economy, and the real estate bottom has fallen out of the market. So the central government is putting its money into itself, going to deploy that in one way, but they did something else that's very important. They said that we are going to change our debt to GDP, the ratio. They've been running at about a 3% deficit. They're going to tweak it and let the economy do a 3.8%. Now you'll say, well, Ira, that's only, what, 20% increase basically on that. Yeah, of how, much, how many billions of dollars that make up their GDP. That's where the money's going to come. Now, Bad news, and there is bad news and good news. The word is that they're still only going to shoot next year for a 5% growth. So the slowdown is so much they've got to put that money in, and the game is that they can stay where they're at with 5% growth. The bigger picture is, are they tapped out? Not in dollars. Is the economy running about all it can do, given the current environment, given their political stance and so on? We'd all love 5% growth today, but guess what? In the third quarter, it looks like the U.S. did 5% growth. Be surprised. Get ready when you see what the third quarter GDP looks like. I think you're going to get a big surprise. In fact, there are some talking 5-4 up to 6%. Whoa, we will see. So when we go to ES23, this is the weekly chart of the E-mini S&P. The bias is absolutely still down in the market. Anytime you're under the red line, which is the 18-week average of closes, this tells you where the bias is according to my method of charting. Bias is one of the tools that says, should you be looking for buy or sell signals? Overall, when you're like that, you're looking for sell signals, not buy signals. The trend is down. Can't argue that. When I take a look at the daily bar, we had this market that went up rather dramatically. You do remember the word artificial intelligence, right? Hasn't fallen, fallen out of your vocabulary. Everything went, anything to do that used artificial intelligence, which by the way, has been around for a long time. Many of us have been seeing it, but now people are finding ways to use it, to say, hey, I have AI. It's a tool they had anyways that was working, but they will develop new ones. That's, that I do believe. But in any case, you came up, you haven't typed in things in your computer with 
correct your spelling on the fly and things like that. What do you think that is? That's artificial intelligence. Um, you're coming up through here. And then you had that big break. So when I measured it, it said, okay, if you use traditional Fibonacci methods, the first reaction would be a 38% reaction off that supposed low. You went there, you came back the other day and you challenged it. So, so far we're doing what I had talked about three weeks ago in my special report, where I thought the October 4th low in most of the stock indices would prove to be a support zone. We're testing it, no ifs, ands, or buts. The test could go negative. You've got the 18-day average about to kiss the gray line, which is the 200-day. Will they kiss and go this way, or is it going to get distinctively under it and push the market down again? That's what we're looking for right now. This is the test time. You're right there. What held the market was the Bollinger Band here. Here, you tried to hold the Bollinger Band in the 200-day average, and then you fell to a new low and came back. In this case, it's just the Bollinger Band, and this is your resistance. To get you out of trouble, if you want to be bullish, this isn't the spot to be bullish, in my opinion. It's over this. If you can't get over that, the bears are going to do it. Who's in control of the market right at this minute? The bears. Why? because you're under the 18 and the 200 day average and the 100. You're getting a bounce in a bearish market that is oversold. Do you deploy new market in an oversold market? In the NASDAQ, did something very similar. You came down, hit the Bollinger Band, gave you a bounce, right? You're trading sideways in the Bollinger Band. What are we doing in this market? Not quite sideways, I can't say that. I can say it in the NASDAQ, just a sideways market with your pivot in it going to be the 18-day average. Sort of like that in the Dow, but more like the S&P. But what's the one common theme all three have? Oversold, oversold, oversold. I define oversold as being readings, where the stochastic has a reading under 30. Do you have it still in the NASDAQ? With tonight's action, you don't. But if I go back a day, did you? Take a look. Got to 29.55. And with today's action, you're trying to come out of it. Today being, we're ready trading at this hour on Wednesday's data. Then you get to the Dow, you see the same thing. Then we come over to the Russell. Are you gonna embed here? Remember I told you how wrong I think analysts have been trying to pick a bottom in this market because they're saying, ah, interest rates have peaked out. That is not what the chart is saying. This chart, you can't count tonight's action because we don't know where Wednesday's gonna finish up. But I can use Tuesday, both numbers under 20. The day before, both under 20 and the day before, not. Tomorrow, which is today, Wednesday's trade, I, even though we're on Tuesday night as I'm talking to you, determines if it's gonna to embed. Tomorrow's a very important day in that market. As we get to the 10-year note, we had hit 5%, there was short covering, and the market's coming back up, all right? To get friendly, you've gotta close over the 106 level. We'll see if it's able to do that. As we come into the five-year note, the resistance is the 18-day average. There is no trend. You have a higher high, lower low. Uh, that's about all that I see there. If I come back to the 10-year, you do see that you got a different pattern, higher lows, higher highs, but still the bias is down. It's a rally in a bear market at this point and no more than that in that market. That's how I view it. Then we come over to the dollar index, which on Monday went down to the Bollinger Band, made a lower and low today, and right back to that 18-day average. It still has a downside bias in the market if it stays under the 18-day average, which it didn't. It finished at 106.08. Now, it opens just a little while. We'll see if it fights there. You have a sideways market that is saying, which way? Again, a warmonger market. If something real bad happens, Israel invades and the U.S. is attacked in some manner or thinks it's attacked, this market comes alive. People will run for the dollar in a world event. Today they're talking, how do you evacuate 100,000 Americans out of the Mideast? Because they're fearful of a powder keg that would go off there. I mean, I'm not making this up. It's there in Bloomberg, Reuters, just read the articles. 
uh, in the euro currency. Overbought, pulling back, support back over here. But you went to the Bollinger Band, just the way you, it's the flip flop of the dollar. Pros came out of the dollar, shorts at the band, they're coming out of longs in this. I again heard talk, the, the economic data out of Europe is a disaster. Their economy continues to shrink in all sectors. So if you looked at manufacturing today, you went, oh my God, look at how terrible it is. And the word parity is coming back as people are talking about that. Uh, this week, we get the European Central Bank coming out with their monetary policy. Miss Lagarde, is, I think there's a 99.9% chance, no rate hike. She will talk how the economies, it's dangerous. Not everybody in the Euro Union has agreed to what they're going to spend is a percentage of GDP versus their debt. That is a big issue coming up here. It's got to be resolved very shortly. Big problems. This market's had a nice rally, but was that it? That's what you got to wonder. And in the British pound, you're caught in this sideways action. So the dollar's caught in that action. The euro's caught in that action. The British pound is caught in the sideways action, not Bitcoin. And now I'm going to switch gears. The, the micro contracts are getting enough volume for us to follow, not the big one. $32,000 margin on the big one versus $850 for this. Come on. So we'll follow this. And it's overbought. It's been in an uptrend. I have been adamant. I, I pinpointed this last week. I said, now you got to be ready. The SEC doesn't really, as I see it, once they didn't challenge. Was it two weeks ago on a Friday? Their appeal date. Uh, and now the ETFs, what's going to hold up the spot ETFs? I don't see anything. And so the market is putting in the premium and look at, you had a bullish crossover tonight with the 18 over the 100 day, in fact. So, uh, you know, while the market's overbought, and I'd never tell a client to be over a Bollinger Band, I spotted it and that's the important thing. In Brent versus WTI, it has gone flat at the $4 level. The market's not moving. One's not gaining on the other. It's staying about where it was. When we look at the June uh, Brent, January Brent, I'm sorry, I said June. Higher high, lower low, but right back here. No real trend at work in the market. It's sort of doing this. You had your spurt up and now it's playing at the 18 day average. It was overbought, it's worked out. It's waiting for an event. Whatever that is, bullish or bearish, it's waiting for an event. The same can be said of the December WTI crude. It's doing the exact same thing. Then in the heating oil, same thing. All the products are waiting. What's the next thing that's going to happen? And in that gas, you know, I'm in the bear camp. I wish it weren't this oversold because I think the market is screaming that it's gonna have problems here at the 18 and the 100 day average all the way up to the 323. I'm not sure it's getting there. If it got here, I think many people wanna be bearish this market, but as a chartist, I don't like telling clients, hey, go into the market, don't worry, it's oversold, but it doesn't matter. It always matters. Here's something that's gonna to matter to you, I think in a massive way. Let's assume that we wake up one morning and the event does happen. Uh, Israel's gone in, they're inside of Gaza, who knows what the heck happens after that. Uh, somehow the splinter groups of Hamas, Hezbollah, whatever, they all come out and the area starts exploding. How do you take advantage? What do you do? These different reports are it. It's our charting software, our news. We write on all the markets all day long. We have a team of writers, that's what they do. And we talk option strategies, spread strategies and futures. What's the cash markets doing? Will the splinter off effect something on exports of meats, demand for certain other goods we have? Where do you go with it all? Think of this as a shopping cart. It's our free offer section. Any of these that you click, and when you click them, it creates a cart for you puts it into that cart, and from that cart, you put in your name, your email address. We then get this right out to you. Okay, it's typically the next business day that we try to get these all dispersed for you. And again, choose the free offers. There's many of them. Take advantage. Even access to my research free is there, and that's normally a fairly expensive deal if you haven't had it recently. I'm I. Rapstein. How you get this is you go to irapstein.com. I guess it's my name. 
iraepstein.com. You can also move your cursor to the top up here if you're on a PC of some type, a Mac, whatever it is. Uh, that'll take you right to that area. Give yourself a chance with this and away you go. I'm Ira. I'll see you tomorrow.